It is a gorgeous spring day, and what better time is it to tropical fi my front and backyard on my suburban quarter of an acre lot in Houston, Texas. But before we get started, always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. So what is up and what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? As I mentioned, it is spring, it is a gorgeous day, and it is about time I throw in a ton of plants to kick off this growing season. With that being said, I'm gonna plant a ton of native species that benefit the wildlife and insects, and also will most assuredly be hardy in this environment. And then I'm gonna plant some broadleaf evergreens that will add a tropical aesthetic to the garden as well so we're gonna be all over the back and front today and just overall doing a huge facelift with a bunch of plants with a bunch of plants I've sequestered until this time of the year so let's get started all right so plant number one ladies and gentlemen is going to be this beaked yucca now before we get started always smash a like button you guys know it helps me out tremendously now I love the look of this it's like blue green and grass like while it is small but it will get from six to 10 feet tall, five feet wide, and grows in zone six all the way to 10. It's native to Texas, all the way into Mexico. And the reason why I'm putting this underneath the pine tree is because the pine tree absorbs a lot of the water that hits the soil. It's obviously a desert plant, so it likes dry soil. So this will be perfect for the spot. And furthermore, it is evergreen and has a unique leaf structure that does add a tropical vibe when it is paired next to more broadleaf green plants. Now I think this spot right here is optimal seeing as it'll get about yay high in the future. And I think it'll definitely stand out with the elevated rocky pond I have put in. Now, one thing I noticed when I picked out this plant is that it looked like there were two plants growing in one. So I'm gonna see if I can divide it and get one plant to put in the front yard and one to put in the backyard. So I might get the two for one speci weshi on the beak yucca. So y'all can see there's two plants in one I'm gonna try and separate them and see without destroying it, if it's possible. I think it is. Look at that. So this is why I strategically picked out this plant. I just got two yuccas in one. Jackpot. Now this dude I think is going in the backyard. Now in the front yard, I put the bigger specimen and what's cool about these yuccas is they can adapt to a ton of different soils. So this guy should take off and thrive as time goes by. What a beautiful Texas native. Sassy little thing. Okay guys, so we've entered the backyard with the second yucca and I'm gonna put it right down around yonder where it can grow, get tall and kind of lean over this pathway. And uh, as always, my wine cups are flourishing in my wildflower native pocket prairie. So let's get in this dude as well. I love having the two for one. Cause let's be honest, man. It is awesome to have a cool front yard, but a cool backyard as well is a dynamic duo landscaping wise. And then I have this helper come through. Gotta do it one handed sometimes, man. But yes, I'm excited to see this guy take off in the back in different lighting and conditions and watch it thrive. All right, y'all, so we got the beaked yucca in the ground and now I'm throwing in a native plant, but this is a very different variety, okay? This is a yopon holly, it is a dwarf yopon. It is a male plant, so it won't produce the berries, but it is native to North America and it does have this amazing slime lime green foliage. This is a garden debut plant. I think it cost me like 40 to $50, but I wanted a native plant that does have lime green foliage because a lot of what we have going on over here is kind of a monotone in regards to the leaf color. This will add a nice meatball pop of lime green, which I need. Now, for all you guys who are native Houstonians, I did purchase this plant at Joshua's Native Garden Center, and they have a lot of non-natives too. Put that meatball in there. But this meatball is especially gorgeous, and it's cool to find a cultivar of a native species, which I know will thrive in the environment, the heat, the cold snaps, and retain its leaves, and yet have a unique color at the same time. So we have the yopon in the ground, and just so you guys can see how it grows, this entire hedge is male yopon hollies, if I am correct. Okay, so it can get nice and full. I think these are the um, giant variety versus the smaller dwarf size. But yes, always nice to have them in the garden. 
So the next plant we're throwing in the ground is going to be the Yucca Gloriosa. Now I bought this last year for half off at Lowe's. It originally was $57, so I got it for about 23 bucks. And this might actually be the four for two special or the two for one times two because I grabbed two of these guys and this one has one specimen and yet another specimen growing right there. This is another yucca that can get about 10 feet tall. It is native from North Carolina down to Louisiana, not necessarily in Texas, but it can grow in zone six all the way to 11 once again. So I need these cold hardy evergreen plants that can tolerate dry soils and that also will add an evergreen tropical vibe. This one qualifies and it is variegated. You gotta watch out for those points though. They will stab you. So I may go ahead and cut those off. But this one, I'm gonna divide up as well. And I'm excited, man. I love these plants, especially when they're on clearance in the fall and I just save them through the winter, plant them in the spring. Now this guy can spread on the ground, covering about eight feet. All right. So we have one pup shooting here. Oh, we actually got three plants in one. All right. Look at that. That wasn't too bad. So there's one plant. So there are three plants right there. Look at that, all three of y'all. All three of y'all. Easily. It's time to distribute these bad boys. So Yucca Gloriosa one, is going right here and that's gonna be the big daddy. Now one thing to keep in mind with these yuccas is if you're doing like a zero scape garden that doesn't require a lot of water, this is one to throw in. It's evergreen and architectural. Look at that, this thing is vicious. Hey, if it can stab a leaf, it can stab a human. Put it underneath a window, keep the home intruders out. So specimen number two is going to go right here in the front of this bed. I did previously have a yucca, but it was not cold hardy. So this guy should fill in that niche quite well. And it gets a ton of that setting sun. Let's get it in. So this is all just one big experiment and you guys know I always report back the process and the progress. Now these yuccas are cold hardy to about 22 degrees Fahrenheit. So in the event of a crazy freeze, I will cover it up, but hopefully this one lasts a lot longer. So plant three is a small fry. So we're gonna get him right here in front of this pine tree let them take off. Now when it comes to the Yucca Gloriosa, you do not want to overwater these bad boys, which is perfect because Lord knows I am a lazy hands-off gardener. So here we go. We're in the backyard with my second, I guess a uh, two for five Yucca Gloriosa. Maybe it'll be two for six. And this dude is definitely flourishing. Another $23 steal of a deal. And I'm going to distribute this one throughout the backyard so I get that nice tropical vibe. And it definitely will be way more tropical with all the fruit trees and evergreens mixed in, okay? Y'all are just gonna have to wait and see on that front bed as well. It's in development. I have a good feeling about this one. Oh yes, I already see three. All three of y'all. All right, so we got the small one off. Okay, here we go. All right. So y'all can see there's the division, but it has all these good roots. So uh, yeah, man. God, these are big ones too. So on this grassy knoll, I'm gonna plant this small one right here. It'll get tall and hopefully obscure this fence line just a tad. And speaking of grassy knoll, RIP John F. Kennedy. So the pattern of the placing with these yuccas is to put them in the front of the beds so you get that architecture and structure front and center and so they obstruct that fence because don't nobody want to see all that. So I promise you guys, one of the hardest decisions is deciding where to put some of these plants. My instinct is telling me to put this guy right here for some instant gratification. And I think that's what I'm gonna go with. Now, luckily these will just produce multitudes of themselves that I can distribute all throughout the area. And I'm very excited. Six plants for what, 56 bucks? It's like $8 a piece, quick math, boom. So y'all can see, man, there's an equal distribution of these yuccas throughout the landscape, and hopefully they all thrive and survive, man. God, dog. Look, it just stabbed me straight in the vein. Thing is sharp. Dang, this plant should be a nurse, holy shit. 
Excellent. So now I'm gonna throw in a couple of non-native, one of which is actually a milkweed. This is a giant milkweed, it's native to Asia, but I think the monarchs will still mess with it, allegedly. This can get about 15 feet tall, which is absurd. So I am gonna tuck it closer to the pine tree um, next to where I just planted this lime slime green yopon holly. So pretty much in this little gap and I'm gonna see how it does. Now evidently, even though this is native to Asia, it still can serve as a larval host plant for the monarch butterfly. It has amazing flowers, but it is not cold hardy below freezing. Now in this small gap, I'm gonna plant a rattlesnake master. It's not much to see right now, but let's just throw it in and I'll update you guys later. So this is a Texas native and it can get about six Whoa. feet tall but uh, it likes moist soil, so I might need to move it. Then on the edge of the bed, I'm gonna throw in this Datura. Now this evidently has some uh, psychedelic tendencies and properties that can also kill you, so why not? I've tried planting one of these before, it did not succeed, but I also did not water it at all. So in this front bed, I'll see it every day. So it might lend itself to be babied a bit more than its previous location. Hopefully you thrive and prosper, youngin. So the sun is beginning to set on the day, but the next plant I'm throwing in the ground, I legit found in my own trash can. I saw the leaf sticking out from underneath the lid, and I was like, I didn't throw away a can of lily. What is this? I opened the lid, and legit, perfectly wrapped, were all these can of lilies that were, I guess, dug up out of someone's yard. So one man's trash is another man's treasure. I am gonna put some of these behind my pond structure. I'm gonna divide it in two and in the other half, I'm probably gonna put my front bed right there just as some backdrop filler uh, type of tropicalness. All right, so there's two nice clumps. So the first clump I put behind this magnolia tree, but rainwater from the roof dribbles all over it. So hopefully it will retain enough moisture to thrive as a backdrop plant. And then the other one I put on the ground right next to the burgundy canna. So now the sun is finally going down. I can turn my hat around so you guys can see my face and it's not obscured by a harsh shadow. But with that being said, the last plant I'm throwing in the ground today has a strong smudging of color. It is this Codeine. Calicacia, a purple elephant ear. This thing is that deep, wavy, majestically mesmerizing, royal divinity, purple elephant ear, you heard? So yeah, I'm gonna divide this dude up. This was a gift from my lady sister. There's like four different plants. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get the four for free special on this guy right here. It's exciting, man. Let's throw it in. All right, there's one. There's two, and there's three and four. Now let's distribute them. So there are hits of purple throughout the pond landscaping behind me. So I need some similar hits and an evergreen broad leaf structure in the front so that way it doesn't just look like a desert garden as I mentioned. Now elephant ears tend to get quite massive, which is amazing, especially because I want more of a differentiation of color in the garden and not too many plants are a deep dark purple. Now the final two, I'm throwing in the backyard and I am gonna put them in my nice curving bed just to fill in all the gaps and of course to add a nice pop of purp. Oh, this soil is fertile. Now one thing to keep in mind with these elephant ears is if it freezes, they will die to the ground, but as long as the ground doesn't freeze, the corum will re-sprout and you will have plants once again emerging in the springtime. So I'm very happy with these. Lord knows I got faith in their existence, their chances of thriving, their colors, all of that. I love me some elephant ear. And okay guys, so there it is, man. All the plants have been put in the ground. It is the next day and I realized I did not shoot a conclusion to this video. So if y'all enjoyed on the way out, please smash the like button. If y'all have any native plant suggestions that could look like a tropical plant, I am more than interested to hear y'all suggestions because just know, man, the wealth of knowledge that you guys, my subscribers, my support team has is immense. So I'm always looking to lean on you guys for good info good plant suggestions and any tips and tricks that you guys have comment them down below and until next time always remember earth is my planet earth is my planet peace killing these songs leaving a bloody life i roost and i'm in it to win it so i'm somebody that you should get used to